Ah, okay, so I seem to have uh, not started the stream on time by accident. Um, hopefully, hopefully this is working now. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. Um, so the first 10 minutes of this stream uh, were offline, apparently, um, by mistake. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, let's let's wind back a bit. So we started uh, a few minutes ago just by looking at a redstone wire uh, placing some Good. Okay, that is working now. Thank you uh, Archer Man Gaming for helping me out here. Um Shout out to you for <laughs> pointing out that I wasn't actually live. So uh, we started by looking at some redstone wire um, and then seeing that it could, the power in that wire coming from the torch can only go for 15 blocks. And then we can use a repeater to boost that power. Uh, I appreciate a lot of Minecraft gamers will know this. If they've played around with redstone, uh, you will have seen this before. Um, but the nice thing about uh, repeaters is they're also diodes so power can't go backwards through them uh, so it matters which way around you put them so this way around no power this way around power flows through it so uh, then we looked at how a torch on a block uh, will be powered and it will do the opposite of the input so here the block is unpowered, uh, which means the torch is on. So our input is off, our output is on. That's a NOT gate, a really simple NOT gate. Um, and if we turn the power on, then this block has power. So any torch on this block will be unpowered, um, which means the output's off. Um, and so input's on, output's off. That's also doing an inversion. So that's, that's working as a NOT gate and this so this lever is acting as a source of our input and the lamp is just showing our output. And then we saw different ways of, or we, we didn't see because it wasn't live, but I sh was trying to show you different ways of building an OR gate. Um, so here, this is the simplest way you can do an OR gate where you just connect two wires uh, and say, this is our output. So that's ORing the two inputs, but the problem is that power is actually flowing from this one all the way backwards. And that really doesn't work in normal electronics. A real OR gate, what we like, is power to not flow back into the inputs. Um, so this way, by having the repeaters as diodes, power only flows uh, in. And then what we can do also to avoid the problem, is another way you can do it in Minecraft, is you can power this block and then extract the power using a repeater. So this way, power flows into the block, but it doesn't actually flow out of it except through the repeater. So this allows us to build an OR gate without power flowing backwards to our other inputs, which might affect results. And then we looked at, or I was showing, how you can build an AND gate. Uh, so an AND gate, I'll just destroy this for a moment. So an AND gate, just like in Logisim, uh, we build two NOT gates. That's all these are. Then we OR the outputs of those two NOT gates and invert the result. So this bit in the middle, it's an OR and a NOT, which makes it a NOR because OR followed by NOT is NOR. And that gives us our AND result. So when one input when both inputs are off, both these torches are on, the middle's powered, so this torch switches off, so the output's off. And then when both inputs are on, the, the middle section here is unpowered, so the output's on. So that's our AND gate. And then we were just going to look at an XOR gate. So we saw in Logisim how we can design an XOR gate using this pattern of NOR gates with a NOT gate on the output. So we gnaw the two inputs, and then we gnaw that result with the two original inputs on either side. And then we gnaw the result of that, invert it with the NOT gate, and that gives us 
our XOR gate. So XOR is exclusive OR. We have one or the other, but not both. So this is a really fundamental building block um, of our adder unit. So we can build a slightly more compact version of this, I think, if I can remember. Uh, that's not how you do it. Uh, sorry, I can't remember exactly how to build this off, off the top of my head. Um, so let, let, let's just look at the expanded version of our adder. So an adder is two half adders combined, and our half adders are XOR gates. So we'll build our first XOR gate. So that's our first kind of half adder, um, except without the inverted output. Um, and then I'm just going to pull up uh, the Logisim design. I'll be making all of the design files and the world file and everything else available on GitHub uh, after this series finishes. Uh, so you'll be able to view everything, everything online uh, and download it all for yourself. Uh, for you to have a go with. Um, so hopefully that will work. Okay, so we've got our first XNOR gate, as this actually is, and then we build that into another XNOR gate as per uh, the design. So this is doing kind of our sum of A plus B, and this will be doing our sum of a plus b plus that whoops sorry uh, plus that carry input um, so to mirror the design of the other the other part let's just drag that wire around there so we see from the logisim design in the other video that there'll be some wires crossing over here uh, so we're going to have to work out how in Minecraft to build that so that we can have wires that, cr that crisscross over each other. Um, but that's okay, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, so this is our output sum to start with. So what we're hoping for here is that we can do 1 plus 0 plus 0 gives us 1 on the output if we look at the lamp. 1 plus 1, well we know that that's going to be 2 in decimal, which will be 1, 0 in binary. And the 0 is our units column, so that will be our sum output over there. So that's correct. And we hope that it doesn't matter which way around we do this. We get a 1 there. Likewise, 1 plus 1 plus 0. 1 plus 1 plus 0. And then lastly, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 which is one one in binary because we have a twos column and a ones column, two plus one is three. So we hope that we get a one in the units column and now we will seem to work out the carry column. So the carry column is a nor of these intermediate results uh, in here. So we need to extract these intermediate results without accidentally picking up power from the torches around it because a, a block directly above a torch will get powered by that torch so that's why we have to step up and over this uh, to avoid that problem. Now I know this isn't the most compact uh, design for other Minecrafters out there but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there later. This is just to show how this works. Okay, now the only thing we've got to be careful of here is the 15 block limit. Uh, and we could just count this or we could test it. Right, so we um, should be able to 
see a result here, hopefully, somehow. Just trying to see whether this has gone wrong anywhere. No, okay. So, this is going to be our carry output. Good, so 1 plus 1 is 2, which is, in this view, uh, the 2's column and the 1's column. So 1, 0, that's 2. Perfect, 1 plus 1 is 2. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1, 1 in binary. Cool, so we have an adder. And something's gone wrong there, because 0 plus 0 plus 0 should have been 0. Ah, so what's gone wrong here is we ran out of power at the last moment. Um, so we could put a repeater in there to fix that, or we could bring this wire a bit further back, and then, because we, we know that this is less than 15 blocks, uh, so that's going to be fine. So we'll just bring this wire a bit further back. And now we should be able to see the correct result. Okay, so what we've just seen there is uh, a slight problem because when I flick the switch, the lamps didn't immediately change. And this is because Minecraft has some delays built in. So there are one tick delays, as we call it, and a tick is just the kind of Minecraft unit of time. There's a one tick delay for each of these um, not gates that we use. And in fact, a redstone repeater is also uh, a delay, um, and it's a two tick delay. I can't remember now. We can find out though. Um, so we can find out by building a little test. We can build a, a kind of time test. So we're going to and our two signals. And the idea is if the lamp ever switched on, then the two signals are out of sync. So what we want to make sure is that the number of ticks is going to be equal between these, um, or at least we think it's going to be equal based on our measurement. Um, and then what we also want is for one of these to be the opposite. Uh, so we can count exactly the delay in between. So I'm going to delete this one. So we know that there should be two ticks to get to here and x ticks this plus one to get to the other side. So let's find out if we put a lever in the middle, you can quickly flick it and see. And we can see that this is a one tick delay. And if we make it a two tick delay, then the signal gets out of sync. And so we see the lamp switch is on. Let's do that one more time. Uh, cool, perfect. Now lamps don't always respond as fast as redstone wires do, so the other thing we can do is to place some redstone wire up here and see whether the torch changes, just to check that. And you can see torch doesn't change, so uh, that works. Good. So now we want to build our 8-bit adder. This is where the challenging part comes in. So like all engineers, I stand on the shoulders of giants and other people have come up with um, how to build full adders uh, and, and good versions of them. Um, and the thing we're concerned about is space. So we need to know that this adder is going to take up not too much space, you know, the right amount of space. Uh, 
uh, to fit within the simulation constraints of Minecraft because Minecraft doesn't simulate the entire world at once. It only simulates 10 chunks or uh, 16 blocks in either direction. Sorry, 16 blocks times 10 chunks, so 160 blocks uh, in distance. So we've got a bit of a constrained uh, environment to fit our system in. And I know that at some point I'm going to build downwards, um, although I don't know entirely yet. So I'm going to fill the current plane for about 140 blocks in midair. Uh, just so that we have a kind of building platform. Cool. So that gets us our building plane and we can expand it later when we need to. Uh, but to start with, let's try and build a single bit inline adder. Now the reason we're going to use what we call an inline design is because that way it will take up the least width possible so we can stack them next to each other and they won't expand too far sideways and then they'll take up a bit more space vertically but we don't need to stack these vertically so it's not a problem so we're minimizing the space taken in the direction that we're going to stack great so now i have to try and translate this design from the minecraft wiki uh, and there are plenty of people who do good tutorials on how to build these things online uh, i'm not saying this is going to be the best example um, by any means. So just to say this, this design is computing the exact same as uh, the thing I built the kind of long-winded way um, on the ground over there a moment ago. Um, it's just more compact. Okay, so that's our first layer, and then we're going to build the layer up from that. Um, so let me see if I can get my alignment right here. We place a block on there, torch on there, redstone wire there. Now, here's something interesting about this design. If I placed a wire next to here, it would connect up. Um, so this design actually uses a repeater to stop the power connecting up. So that repeat is extracting power from this block, which is coming from that torch, but without connecting to this wire here. So you can see if I remove the torch that's powering that wire, it doesn't affect the repeater. So this is some interesting kind of tricks that people have worked out how to do in Minecraft to make really compact circuits. So this is going to be where our well, one of our carry outputs is going to come from. And we can see here that this is connecting up. Uh, this design conveniently places a block in there, which cuts off that connection because power can't flow up around the sides. So when that block is, is in the way. Um, and then produce this output here. And that's going to be uh, near where our main, so above this is where our main sum will come out in a moment. Okay, so this bottom wire here is our A input, and then on the next layer up, we'll have our B input to this adder. And place a torch here. So I'll post a link to this design in the chat in a moment, um, just when I finish building it. That was not the most convenient way. Okay, so this is also interesting. Here we've got one torch powering this wire. This torch above it is also going to have that effect, uh, potentially, because if we so we can experiment with this for a moment. When we place wire directly under a torch like this, it's actually, it looks way far down, but it's actually in the block directly beneath this torch, so it gets powered. So that's what's happening over here um, with that bit of design. 
And uh, where was I in this build? Uh, so I've done that, I've done that. Hold on, I'm layer one, two, layer three. Yeah, layer three. Uh, oh yeah, I've done that torch, done that block, done that one. <laughs> I'm losing track of where I am in the design, guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we've got those two blocks uh, stacked. Is that right? Yeah. And then we place a wire on here. So the, the nice thing about Minecraft these days is it has commands built in. So once we've built one of these, um, we don't have to worry so much because we'll kind of be done. Um, we can just copy, use the clone command to copy the design around once it's working. Uh, we'll have to check it works first. Okay, so the last layer here is this fourth layer where we place blocks like that, torch like that, torch like this, a wire here, oops, block in there, wire on the other side. Now I know that there's going to be wire on top and this is you know, the fifth layer uh, going up and then Place that there, that there. That goes up there. And then the last thing is for the output over here. Okay. So in theory, that's our full ladder. That doesn't look quite right. I think I might have missed something here. Have I missed something? I must have missed something. Uh, so on this fourth layer, that torch should be there. That's what I've missed. And on the layer further down, on the first layer, I missed a torch there. Okay, so I think I've built this now. So I'm just going to copy and paste a link to this into the chat somehow. I've just realized I had it open on my main computer and uh, <laughs> and the chat is open on my on my laptop next to me to try and get this to run. <laughs> so I've got to open it up. Okay, so that's the inline adder that we've just built. Uh, and I'm going to see whether it works now. So our carry is coming out over here, and it's actually both of these wires here. Uh, so I'm going to take that and put it into a lamp. And I can already tell something's going wrong because we're getting a carry when there's no carry input. Uh, so. 0 plus 0 plus 0 should be giving us 0. So I must have missed a redstone wire in here somewhere. Uh, and I suspect that's because this is supposed to be dust, not... There you go, it's supposed to be a block of dust, uh, not a torch. I always make that mistake. And then, likewise, this one is supposed to be uh, dust, not a torch. Um, so the little dots in the Gamepedia are uh, are dust and the circle, red circles are torches uh, and I always seem to get them mixed up. Okay, so now this is our carry input that we saw earlier and the really nice thing about this design is we can see the carry input and output are directly opposite each other so when we stack this uh, going width ways across so when we stack it going this way uh, or going the other way then the inputs and outputs for the carries chain together automatically which is what we need to build that adder as we saw in the design video today. So 1 plus 0 plus 0 gives us 1 not either 1 
1 plus 1 gives us 1, 0. And hopefully 1 plus 1 plus 1, in other words, 3 gives us 3. And then we can try, because this is such a small circuit, we can actually try all the combinations. Um, so we can try all the combinations of inputs and we can see that it works. Um, with larger circuits, uh, we have to do proper verification, uh, which we call design verification. And I'll be doing a series on that in the future. Cool. So now we want to try and clone this design and spread it out. So what I'm going to do is to clone it from where I'm standing. This will be our kind of golden copy of a single bit. And we're going to copy eight of them to somewhere else on this uh, surface. Um, so to start with, I'll make a note of my coordinates. Now I know that Minecraft has position relative to like where I'm looking and where I'm standing. Um, but I found that really uh, kind of doesn't always work in Minecraft. Um, like sometimes it will think you're looking slightly to an angle when you're not and it will end up obliterating your design. So I'm going to try and clone it directly. So I know that this is where I'm starting and my end point is going to be one block over and two blocks up. So it's going to be this one up here. So if I line myself up with that so that I'm kind of standing underneath it. So I'll be standing on this block. Good. So if I write down those coordinates as well, that gives us the expanse we need. And then I can go and copy this, hopefully, to somewhere over here. So we're going to put eight of these side by side because we're building an 8-bit arithmetic, arithmetic unit. Um, so we're going to clone starting at the coordinates I first wrote down. So that's 141, 33, 31. And this is the end point for the copy. So 158, 38, 30. And then we want to copy it to oh, where I'm currently standing, which I've forgotten to write down. Um, so we're copying it to 179.33.88. Um, so I'll just quickly type those numbers in again. Now the reason I'm doing this on coordinates is because then I can just add to these coordinates without having to walk anywhere in order to copy it across multiple times. Um, and we don't really care about the cloning modes for this. Okay, so with any luck, you can see that copied the starting block that I had and it's copied the end blocks. So that's all good. It's given us a perfect uh, copy of that bit. Ah. Now we can see what's gone wrong here. I've forgotten to copy these two parts of the output here. Um, so I needed to go one block further over. And if we look on the coordinates, that's the third one. Um, and one block further over and the way we're looking at it is actually subtracting from that coordinate system. So keep the same starting point, but just move the end point over by one. Um, cool. So I'm going to try that command again, but with the new end point, and we should see uh, it work. OK. So we can see now that we've got the carry output that we wanted. and the various inputs and stuff. So, so that I don't have to go destroying these blocks all the time, I'm going to destroy them on the original source. And then we'll try that one last time just to make sure we get the right result. Now, we can also um, look at the
mask modes and things um, just to make sure it definitely does the copy and there we go we get the correct oh no we don't hmm we've lost a block here and gained a block here that wasn't what I wanted how's that happened have I deleted more than I intended to back oh <laughs> I've deleted more than I intended to over here I must have been in a hurry So let's try that. Oh. Hmm. It's interesting. Oh, because the coordinates are going positive, so it's it's placing it slightly differently from what I intended. Um, okay, well that's all right. It it works now. Um, and so we want to chain this across to the left, so if we look when I go left and right, it's shifting that, and we can count how many blocks wide this is. It's one, two, and then not forgetting torches here, it's three blocks wide. Uh, so now we should be able to copy and paste this across. Um, so if we subtract three, we should get 85, and then we can see here, good, we've got our second bit of our adder all perfectly aligned and this is our carry input which as we know we can use for doing subtraction uh, later on and we'll see how to do that in a bit and then we're just going to go ahead and build a few more of these okay so that's bit number three so I remember doing this about nine years ago uh, when world edit was a thing but it didn't really work on my computer so i built a completely horrible 8-bit processor back then uh, in minecraft using just building blocks and stuff uh, like just all manual building so we've now got one two three four five six seven bits and the last one okay so we now have eight bits um, and this is good this is our kind of fine starting point and hopefully we can do something like uh, so this is 127 and we're going to add one and we should get 128 perfect so 127 plus one is 128 how do I know this is 127 well these are the units column, twos for column, fours column, eights column, sixteens, thirty-two, sixty-four, one hundred and twenty-eights column. And what we know is that if we set all of the bits below the one hundred and twenty-eights column, it will be exactly one less than the one hundred and twenty-eights column. So it will be one hundred and twenty-seven, and that applies regardless of which column. So all the bits less than the sixty-fours column, that's going to be sixty-three. So that's a very easy way to work out. You can see all the bits are on. Just find the first column that's off and deal with it. Uh, deal with it that way. Like, don't try and add up all the columns manually. Okay, so that's our adder. But now we want also to make a subtractor. And this is where we have to do a bit of design work. Because we saw in Logisim that what we want to do is to invert well to choose between uh, either our original input for doing addition or on the B input we want to actually invert in other words we want to XNOR all of those inputs um, and this requires us to build a, an inline XNOR gate right because we want to be able to XNOR on this B input in the same width as our adder. So I don't actually have a design for this. Uh, I'm going to give it a go um, and we'll see what happens. So our starting point is uh, we've got two kind of uh, two inputs, our mode control, which is going to come from the side here somewhere. 
this is where we'd like it to come from because then we can chain just like with the carry we can chain across sideways and then we're going to have the b input coming from the back here somewhere okay so our x nor gate we know has a nor gate on the output somewhere here and i'm going to guess that we can do something like this okay uh, so that's our x nor output and then we know that we want to have the results of two nor gates coming into it so if i uh well if i step this back I step this back then I can have uh, power coming in from one of the NOR gates at the bottom and I can have power coming from one of the other NOR gates in up here. So these are two intermediary NOR gates. So what I'm trying to do is translate uh, this design that we saw earlier this kind of neat square of gates into a vertical design. So th this is what I'm trying to do, but under a different layout um, so that it fits in, in the design that we want. So we've got this output here. We've got these two uh, vertical like intermediary ones here. And then we want to be able to do um, that first gate in here somewhere. And this might enable us to do it. OK, so the last thing is that we need to be able to or so these both need to have the inputs coming from the other, um, for, from the original inputs, as well as being fed to this kind of NOR gate here. So we need to be able to take a copy of the B input and give it to this gate here. Oops. Uh, so what we've seen there is that it's oscillating uh, and it's oscillating because uh, the power's feeding back somewhere where I didn't intend it to and that's because uh, I'm probably going to need a repeater in here to stop this flowing backwards. Oops, okay that's still not. Uh... Oh because this block will so this block will power the stone, the redstone next to it because of this configuration, so that's not going to work. Um, so I can try and use a repeater here to extract power from the block behind it, and then I can also use a redstone wire here to feed power into it, into the block above. So this redstone wire is powering this block, and this repeater is extracting the power and passing it on. So that's our copy of our B and then we need to also give this uh, a copy of the clear input that we're going to, uh, sorry the subtract control that we're going to have, not the clear control. That's for registers in the next episode. So if we build this across what we can do is bring one copy down and the other copy around, but we don't want the power to flow back uh, backwards. So as I showed earlier, the OR gate is a bit of a problem um, because the power flows backwards when you don't mean it to. So we can create a repeater into there. The problem with this design is it's not going to chain across particularly well um, as it is right now. So it's only technically three blocks wide, which is okay um, and it wouldn't 
but but it would interfere with itself because this block here would interfere with this one. So this way of doing the uh, input isn't quite going to work for us. Um, but we've got our starting point, so we, we know that uh, this configuration of blocks kind of seems to work. Um, let's go and see if we can, can translate this onto the main subtractor, add a unit, and then see if we can fix the chaining afterwards. So we'll extend out the B input here and we'll start to build that same configuration again. So that's one of our XOR gate, uh, one of our intermediate gates for the XOR. This is going to be the other one. So this is directly in front of this torch, that's why it gets powered. Um, and then we saw how we can have a repeater here, a block here. So I've cut out a wire here. Uh, do I need to... Oh. Yeah, I'm still going to need it because we want this to go here. This to go up here. This to go here and this to go here. And this is actually really similar to what we had in the adder earlier anyway, because uh, the adder involves XOR gates. I'm just trying to build my own so you can see this design process um, as we start to think about what's going on. Um, so if I put wire here, the problem is that, uh, oh no, that's okay, that's fine, It will that will work. Okay, so this is our B input over here now. So at the moment our XNOR is producing a 1. If I give it 1, then that's correct. So an XNOR is neither or both, but not just one on its own. At the moment we haven't provided the subtract input going across, so that we can treat as 0. So if our B input is also 0, then they're both zeros, so an XNOR would give us a 1, which we see here. Otherwise, B inputs a 1, so XNOR gives us a 0. So now we need to supply that subtract uh, input in a way that we can chain across. So in order to see that, I'm going to have to build out this one as well, so we can see how that chaining is going to work. So if any of this doesn't make sense, please do ask questions in the comment section and I will try to reply. Uh, but I'm trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. Uh, hopefully the stream is still working smoothly and at a good enough frame rate. Um, again, any problems just shout and I will try to get stuff fixed. Okay, so that's our duplicate circuit. And now we need to be able to uh, chain across the inputs to these gates here uh, and the bit at the top. So what we can't do is place a wire on here because if we do it connects everything up and even if we break off those connections, uh, well we don't need to break off this connection necessarily, um, but if we do that you see that it oscillates. Um, and even if I break it off, it still oscillates because the power is flowing backwards. So we can't do that, uh, which means that in order to get power to that block, we have to provide some kind of input on the side here. And if we do this, then the problem is that it doesn't come from the side, so the power is not actually going into, it's flowing this way, not that way. So for this, we're going to have to place it like that so that the power flows down and in. And then 
we're sort of left with no choice but to place a repeater in here. And I don't know whether this is going to work because, yeah, this will kind of link across in a way that we don't want. Um, so how do we fix this? If anyone's got any ideas, they can always give me a, give me a little post. Um, If I can get this one block higher than it already is, then I can make this work, but I don't know how to get power down to this block here. Hmm. So this design of XOR gate may not work for us. We may have to do something a bit different uh, to make this work. Um, let's see. I'm trying to supply power to this one without supplying it to this one. Um, yeah, it's got to... So if I go this way around to get to it, then I can get there. And then I've just got to be able to link it back over here, um, but without accidentally supplying power backwards. I don't think this is the best design. I've definitely done better designs than this in the past, uh, but never mind. Um, is there a way I can do this differently? Maybe if so what one trick we might be able to play is to kind of invert our subtract signal again. It's not, you know, so we can supply this power down here and then we can separately deal with this problem as we did before. Um, break off any connection. Uh, no. So that gets the power to down there, that gets power to there, and this inverts, and this can be our chain for the subtractor. And this will also act as that kind of inversion uh, that we saw in the Logisim design, I guess. Um, okay, so that might work. That might give us a workable design. Um, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever built, but it'll do, I guess. Um, I'll test it in just a moment. And we're also going to have to deal with that 15 block limit going across here, because this is just one long wire, right? So. We'll need to deal with that. Um, okay, so this is our subtraction mode. And we also know that for subtraction mode, um, we need to take the mode and feed it into the carry input. So if this design works, we'll, we'll be kind of done. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to clone it all the way across and uh, we'll have a working subtractor as well as an adder. And what I've done here is really kind of silly. I don't need this extra block. I've just realized I can just hang torches off the side here to achieve the same result. And it will be just a bit simpler, a bit easier to build. Okay. So that might work. At the moment, it's doing addition, so it's doing 127 plus uh, 1 in theory, 
and that's giving us 128, so that works. And what we'd like to do is 127 minus 1, um, but we can't actually test that until we've built all of these. So what we can pretend to do is switch off all of these. So now we've got essentially 3, and we'll do a 2-bit subtraction. So if we treat this as a 2-bit two's complement, we could call it uh, minus 1, essentially. And so minus 1, minus 1. OK, so our input ran out somewhere here. So this is minus 1 minus another one, which should give us minus 2, which is, if we just look at this 2-bit result, that's what we get. 1, 0, treating it as a 2-bit, 2's complement, we get minus 2. Cool. So that seems like it worked. Um, and we can see that this XOR is working as sorry x nor is working as we intended um, so here the input is zero here the input zero x nor those together we should get a one and that's indeed what we get down there uh, if i turn this off then we're back to what we had before when i was demonstrating um, cool so we can clone this all the way across and i'm actually just going to build it manually rather than risking the clone command destroying the circuit I've already built. Um, and then we'll be done for today, the live stream, guys. Tomorrow we'll be looking at memory and how we can build some registers to attach to this so that we can store some values, store some results, and yeah. Uh, as we go along in the later videos, I'm going to be explaining more about the actual computer architecture of this. So at the moment, we're just looking at the modules we need, the kind of units, uh, the building blocks for how we make a processor. So the fact that we can do arithmetic, we'll also look at how we can do logic. Uh, you may have heard of logic units. We'll have a look at those. Um, so once we've got those building blocks in place, we'll then be able to look more at the kind of high level design of how a processor goes together you know why do we have these units why do we piece them together in the way that i'm showing um how does that all fit uh in the kind of grander scheme of processor design um, we'll see that we have different stages of the processor and how those stages fit together and uh, And then in the last few videos, a few days from now, hopefully, uh, we will be able to run some real programs and I'll show you how uh, the kind of bottom end of a compiler would look like, uh, like the machine code and what we call assembly code that it generates, um, which we wouldn't normally write as programmers nowadays. Uh, some programmers still have to write it, write assembly code at the really low level, but not very many. Um, but we'll get to see what it is. And it's important that we understand it, particularly if we ever want to do efficient, fast, performant, high performance, as we call it, computing. Um, yeah, so we're almost, almost kind of done here. Uh, just filling in the redstone and torches. So I'm trying to go through this piece by piece uh, methodically. The way I tend to do things is I lay out all the blocks and then I do all of the redstone and all of the torches. Um, and then I go, you know, each, each type of thing one by one. Um, but it's not, it's not always perfectly methodical. I'll probably miss something. All of that. Okay, let's let's do some of the torches now. So the problem with building a design this big, uh, one of the challenges of building it in Minecraft is that 
it's very difficult for us to test, uh, partly because Minecraft's really slow and partly because actually we can't test every possible number input. It just wouldn't be feasible. Um, you know, there are 256 possible inputs on one of them and then uh, 256 on the other. So, you know, 16 bit possible input, 65,000 possible inputs. It would take a very long time for us to actually play Minecraft and test all of those. So we have to test a few interesting values and then hope that we pick what we call interesting values because they should indicate if there's a bigger problem within the design. So I'm just bringing these A, uh, a inputs further out and uh, the other thing I should do is check that the power flows that far, which it does. If it didn't, we'd have to use a re repeater. Um, so lots of other people have built redstone computers, um, Minecraft computers of different scales. Uh, I know someone attempted a 32-bit. Quite a few people have done 8-bit stuff. The aim with this series is not to build the best or the fastest or, or the most efficient. The aim is to try and explain this uh, and show you how to build it um, and relate that to real electronics as well and show that the design we're using in Minecraft is actually real and does actually function the same way we build a real processor so that you guys can understand it. Uh, so as we go through this series, I'll be explaining more in the live streams about how, build, how to build it and adding more information that may not appear in the uh, videos all the time. Um, great. So, last few steps here. I missed. I knew I'd missed something out, uh, which is these blocks linking stuff up. Okay. So we also need. Uh, these blocks here, right? Um, and this is the other problem with building inside Minecraft is we have to fit in a really sometimes tight spaces and uh, we're right down at the Norgate level, like real hardware design that I do for my PhD, we would never deal with, well, not never, but almost never deal with anything on the Norgate level. Um, we would we, we have other ways of designing uh, circuits that works at the kind of unit level of we need an adder or we need uh, a much larger block than that even potentially. Um, and we don't have to deal with individual wires. We just give everything names and say where the names go to and it all looks a bit like software, uh, even though it's not. Um, so the other thing I've done here is used up extra blocks where I don't really need to um, because you see I can just place the torch directly above it. So this doesn't really matter much, um, it's just aesthetic I guess. Um, and then we need to place the torches along this side as well. So there's a nice symmetry to this I guess. So I also mentioned earlier that we will need to check how long this adder is. So we know it's three blocks wide for each adder uh, and there's eight of them which makes it 24 which is definitely bigger than 16 so we would definitely need a repeater in here. Now the problem is if I place a repeater directly above this torch even though that's the right place for boosting the power uh, this torch is the block underneath it is no longer powered so I've got to move it one further back to make that work. Okay so assuming I didn't mess anything and got all the chaining and everything correctly done. This should now be doing. So this, the A input is all zero, the B input is all ones. So we're going to treat this as two's complement, but we could also treat it as unsigned um, numbers. But that, like the, in terms of the actual wires, unsigned and two's complement, you can't see a difference. It's just we as humans that interpret it differently. It's all about that data representation. Uh, we're using the same physical circuit, uh, the same power states to represent two different things and we pick which representation we mean. So here in two's complement we've got 
0 plus minus 1, which gives us minus 1, which is all 1s on the output. And then if we flick this switch, we should be doing 0 minus minus 1, which should be 0 plus 1. So we should just get 1 as the result, which we do. Perfect. OK, uh, so if we do 1 minus minus 1, we get 2. Good. And 1 plus minus 1 should give us 0. And here we can see those time delays as the results from the carry ripple across, as we call it, because the first result will come out here. If, you know, that's the fastest. It's got the fewest not gates in the way, the fewest delays, and then it will gradually ripple across. And in fact, this view is what you would have seen in the teaser video of me just kind of flying across the ad I already built uh, when I was uh, kind of refreshing myself for the stream series. Okay, so that's our add a subtractor unit. We're done. Uh, it appears to work. If it doesn't, we will find out in the future, but it does look like all the bits and the carries and everything are chaining across. Uh, and it looks like I can change the bits in the right places. Um, the subtract mode is as we want, so on means subtract, off means add. Uh, yeah, I think it's working guys. Cool, thanks very much for watching. Uh, there'll be two more design videos tomorrow covering uh, memory and looking at memory used for registers and we'll learn what registers are. And then uh, we'll try and build them in tomorrow evening's live stream. Uh, not only will we try and build the registers, uh, and there's uh, four of them, we'll also be looking at how we can link those registers up to the inputs here, to the A and B inputs of this arithmetic unit. So thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe um, so you don't miss tomorrow's live stream. Uh, do ask questions uh, in the comments sections uh, of the videos or the live stream. Uh, I'll be on for another sort of half an hour or so, keeping an eye on things uh, if you do. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, have a good evening and keep well, despite everything that's going on in the world. <laughs> Bye.